Hello guys, my name is Johan from Comet and today I want to talk about uh, Web3 onboarding and uh, account abstraction. In Web3, we'll talk a lot about adoption and how we want to bring Web2 people into a Web3 application. But at Comet, we think that for that, there needs to be um, a frictionless experience. For example, if you take an e-commerce website, or a regular game, you don't see uh, a Stripe integration coming first. You see people actually playing or seeing the dApp, and then after they do some interaction, let's say a Stripe uh, pop-up is gonna show up and you have to put your credit card. And the idea is to strive to that UX in Web3. And we can see for, for the moment uh, how it's done in Web3. I think the main uh, wallets for now are Rainbow Kit or Connect Kit. Uh, we can try and see what's available right now. So uh, we're gonna try and see uh, what's the onboarding flow uh, using uh, Connect Kit on a small demo. So I'm gonna take the position of a user, a Web2 user, that don't have any knowledge in Web3. I'm gonna choose MetaMask, which is probably the most famous uh, wallet at the moment. I'm gonna have to install the extension, of course, because I don't have it on my PC. Uh, and after uh, downloading the extension, I'm gonna have to uh, create a new wallet as a new, new user. Uh, I'm gonna click on it. Then I'm gonna have to read a small description of the data that MetaMask have access to. I'm gonna have to put a, a password, of course, just like a regular um, interaction with the website. Uh, I have to click on understanding that MetaMask has not access to my, my password. Now I have a small, um, I would say a small image explaining to me um, how can I secure my wallet because with MetaMask, what's happening is I have to uh, take my seed and uh, have to keep my seed, uh, the MetaMask is not going to do it for me, which means that if I lose my seed, of course, I'm going to lose my wallet. And, of, and for a new user, that's a bit difficult because as a new user, I don't have many knowledge on, on what happens here. And I think that that's something that's going to be troubling to, uh, to Web2 people. Uh, so here MetaMask tries their best to explain uh, what, uh, what is a seed phrase and how you can store it uh, securely. Uh, but I think it's really good for a Web3 user, but for someone that uh, just discover blockchain, it's gonna be a bit tough. Uh, of course, I'm gonna have to uh, confirm uh, that I stored my uh, seed phrase. And uh, this process is a bit, a bit complicated. Okay, now I just created my wallet, so I'm good to go. Uh, now I can uh, close the uh, extension pop-up. I can see here that I have my account that uh, has been created. And then I can come back to my DAP. And when I come back to my DAP, I just have to reload it. And then I'll be able to connect with my new, newly created MetaMask wallet. So you can see here, I have my account that I just created. I can connect to the DAP. And then uh, when I'll be connected to the DAP, I'm gonna try to mint an NFT. Uh, and we'll see if I'll be able to do that. Here we can see the newly created address. So I'm gonna go and try to mint my NFT. So I click on mint. And then MetaMask is gonna ask me, of course, to spend money on Matic uh, to buy uh, that NFT, but I don't have any Matic uh, on my account. So what I would have to do is I would have to uh, go on an on-ramp website such as Ramp and buy crypto by sending fiat and then uh, convert my fiat to a uh, Matic. And to do that, I will have to do a KYC, uh, maybe give my email. And this is something that's not really optimal and too much friction for what we want and what we strive for. So we just saw that these solutions work well for Web3 people. I think it's really secure and you have all the Web3 features that we like, such as self-custody and privacy-preserving solutions. But for Web2 users, it's not the right solution, we think. For example, at Comet, we spend a lot of money on ads on Facebook and TikTok trying to uh, attract Web2 people. But we realized that at the end of the day, when we, let's say we paid for, for some users, let's say 100 people uh, at the entry, at the end of the process, we maybe we gathered like two people. So uh, I think there was too many friction along the way uh, for us to uh, well, attract those users. And we spend a lot of time trying to think about a solution that showcase a great UX uh, without friction, but keeping those uh, self-custody and privacy-preserving features I just talked about. And I just wanted to show you guys uh, a bit of a demo. So now we're gonna try and see uh, with Comic Connect, our account abstraction solution, uh, how it works and how you can onboard someone without any friction. 
So if we go there and we go to uh, the same website, uh, I'm gonna have to click on connect and then create a new wallet. I'm gonna be asked to uh, put my credential, my biometrics. So what's happening here is that we are gonna create a private key in the secure enclave of your device. And the DAP uh, is only gonna interact with the, that private key by sending a message or transaction to be signed. Uh, so we, the DAP never really has access to the private key. It always stays uh, in the enclave of the user and the user is gonna just with his uh, biometrics, uh, allow that private key to sign a transaction or messages. So if we continue the flow, uh, now with my bi biometrics, I just created a wallet. If we go on settings, we can see the address of the wallet, which is a Gnosis safe, as I said. Uh, and now I'm gonna try to, to mint my NFT. So if you remember, I don't have any Matic for now, but I can just click, uh, put my biometrics again to sign my transaction. Uh, and then you'll see that the NFT will be minted uh, without any on-ramp, without any gas, uh, because we relay the tr transaction. Uh, and the user does not even have to understand what gas is. Uh, it will be able to mint an NFT, as you can see. Uh, and I think that's something that we can really uh, consider a good UX flow uh, to onboard a user. As you saw at Comet, we really pushed towards account abstraction. And the idea is to bypass problems such as vendor lock-in or uh, the on-rem. That's a really big problem in the UX for Web2 users. We rely on standards uh, on the client, for example, with the WebAuthn API, with, with the cryptographic exchange between the browser and the client, and also on the crypto part with the wallet. That's a Gnosis safe, which is probably the most secure wallet uh, in Web3 uh, as we speak. We don't want to make any compromise in terms of UX and uh, keeping the secure aspect and the self-custody and privacy-preserving features that makes Web3 what it is.